It's already been almost three months since I put out a video that was, well, if I'm being honest, a Trojan horse for shooting down bad meteor-like rumors that, well, ended up being correct. I said that there is not a full meteor-like desktop launch happening, and eventually Intel corrected some misleading statements. And, well, look, I say that that video had a Trojan horse, the Cinebench Meteor Lake score, because, well, <laughs> I had actually been saving that Cinebench leak for weeks, and I chose that video because, well, I didn't think a Intel correction video would be interesting enough to a lot of people, and so I thought, why don't I jazz it up by adding some benchmarks? And, well, the point is, though, those benchmarks at the time were underwhelming, but to be fair, I was also told that they were coming from non-final silicon in test systems that really weren't built to test efficiency or show the final, final performance of the product, and that I did expect it to improve. Although I did say that I didn't expect the overall performance to improve that much, maybe double digits by the final release, but not like 30% or something. And, and that's because the power consumption I was seeing, which I didn't want to talk about because I thought too many people would misquote it. Well, today I have almost final Meteor Lake Silicon benchmarks that kind of back up what I was suspecting back then. If I put these on screen, you can see a single threading Meteor Lake score of around 700. It's above 700, but I don't want to say the exact score to protect a source. And then a multi-threading score that is around 7,700 in Cinebench R20. And yeah, it's not bad. In some ways, it could be argued to be impressive. But look, if we compare this to its equivalent 6 plus 8 Raptor Lake chip, we can see that although the multi-threading performance is higher, which is interesting, the single threading is still lower. And I guess to continue to try to be extra fair to Meteor Lake, we can point out that the Raptor Lake system was pulling over 100 watts, and Meteor Lake is expected to get the scores you're seeing today at lower than that level of power consumption. But I actually have to reveal something else a bit unfortunate too, and that's that it seems like to me, based on what I've heard from people I spoke to this week, that Meteor Lake's power efficiency performance per watt sweet spot is really apparently between 65 to 95 watts. And I actually ran this past people at Intel that said, yeah, that's true. And so... I don't know. I guess the performance we're seeing out of existing Raptor Lake, not even Raptor Lake Refresh, you can expect that like 130 watt Raptor Lake performance to show up in like, I don't know, 75 to 90 ish watt Meteor Lake systems. I don't know. Call me crazy, but I was just kind of hoping for that to be closer to like 45 watts at the same performance as Raptor Lake. And therefore, I guess it's no wonder why Intel is actually starting to compare Meteor Lake's efficiency, not to Raptor Lake, but to Alder Lake, which, let's remember, that will be over two years old by the time Meteor Lake launches, and therefore, it would be like if AMD was comparing Zen 5 Strix 12-core APUs next year to their 8-core Zen 3 Plus Rembrandt chips from over two years ago. That would just be seen as weird. It's a Phoenix successor, but I now see why Intel's likely to do that. And I have to remind all of you that Meteor Lake's not going to be competing with Phoenix. It's really going to be competing with Hawkpoint, which at a minimum I've confirmed in a recent leak will get a 60% performance boost in AI over Phoenix. And I believe that does have to come from clock speeds. And so I would suspect the GPU and CPU clocks are at least notably higher than its predecessor. And therefore, if we're really summing this all up, it's becoming more and more obvious that Meteor Lake's likely to win idle efficiency against Hawkpoint and maybe low power casual workloads. But if you push the cores hard, I don't actually know that it's going to have that much of an edge. When I look at its design, it looks decently more expensive as well. But I guess that gets us to the main point of this video. Nova Lake, Lunar Lake, and Panther Lake, all these other things... Does Intel just have Meteor Lake coming to laptop next year? And what do they actually have ready to launch in 2025 against all of those AMD APUs that I've leaked are coming out over the next 14 to 18 months? And I'm tackling this today because I believe some of the statements in Intel's earnings call were a little bit misleading, and I want to get to that, including some big details about Intel's Vcash competitor with Nova Lake. But first, an ad from a sponsor. 
This piece of content is brought to you by FlexiSpot and their roster of high quality adjustable standing desks and desk accessories like their walnut set that includes a pencil holder, keyboard support, and floating moon lamp. Honestly, all of their stuff is incredibly high quality and I'm so excited that we are sponsored by them again. That's right, again. Dan, of course, was already using a FlexiSpot desk up in Massachusetts for the past year, and we were ecstatic then to work with them again when they contacted us because, well, Dan has nothing but good things to say about them after all of this time. FlexiSpot desks truly are made with high-quality bamboo that allow for incredible weight support and durability against all types of would-be destroyers. They come with an advanced one-touch LED control panel with three programmable buttons for different height levels, and you can customize your desk with preferred colors and sizes of said desk and even desk frame. And FlexiSpots also come with an incredible set of warranties. And in fact, they're having a Black Friday sale right now, and you can support Moore's Law is Dead by using the code Broken silicon to get $30 off their E7, E7 Pro, and C7 chair. Clicking the links in the description helps support Moore's Law is dead a lot, and these are very high quality products that we really do swear by, so check out FlexiSpot Desks today. Now, at least one thing I need to highlight from Intel's earnings call this week is that there was a claim that Alder, or her, well, I'm sure they meant Arrow Lake, was demonstrating excellent functionality in Windows right now. And this stuck out to me immediately because I just was reminded of Intel also claiming Meteor Lake had powered on and was performing well two whole damn years before, well, before now, and it's still not out. So just remember that even though Intel is claiming Arrow Lake is working right now, they said the same things about Meteor Lake over two years before it even came out. And in fact... If Intel does manage to launch Arrow Lake by the end of next year, that's actually an improvement in cadence compared to Meteor Lake because, well, according to what I have been told, Arrow Lake actually powered on in quarter two of this year, and launching Arrow Lake late next year would be about, I don't know, a year and a half from power on to release, whereas Meteor Lake was over two years from what I am told. And, well, yeah, I'll get to the rest of that quote very soon, but I want to highlight why I started asking about Panther Lake. It's because, at least from what I saw, it kind of seemed to me like Intel and their recent quarter three earnings call was pretending that Panther Lake would basically be ready in early 2025, which made absolutely no sense to me because I'm confident Arrow Lake isn't launching until the end of 2024, and then I know Lunar Lake comes after that. So then what, would Lunar Lake and Panther Lake launch at the same time? I had to reach out to all my sources about this at Intel, and I did. And if I put this on screen, let us just summarize the information right now. So again, to clear up confusion, Arrow Lake powered on in quarter two of this year, and nobody that I've spoken to expects it to have a full launch until late quarter four, 2024. In fact, some people are worried it might not launch until December. And additionally, the sources I spoke with, one that was willing to be quoted here, felt that their Q3 earnings were a bit misleading. First of all, Lunar Lake is launching in the first half of 2025, or maybe end of 2024 if they can pull it up to a December launch next to Arrow Lake. And then 18A, you know, the thing that Panther Lake will use, it may be ready sooner, like was claimed in their recent earnings. But Panther Lake, which will use 18A, I am told distinctly that will not be ready until quarter four, 2025. And I actually got a snippet of something else here. The big LLC, last level cash version of Nova Lake, I asked and I had confirmed that this is definitely a direct answer to AMD's vCache. Well, Intel's first real implementation of a vCache competitor is apparently not launching until the first half of 2027. And I guess the non- LLC versions will launch in late 2026, which means, I mean, forget Zen 6. This thing is sounding more like a Zen 7 or even post-Zen competitor, which, yeah, I think we can then just say it. I just leaked some big, important information about all of AMD's upcoming APUs, which I do recommend people watch if you haven't. AMD has Hawkpoint, Strixpoint, and apparently more X3D variants of Dragon Range launching next year. And then by the time Intel finally launches Lunar Lake and Arrow Lake Mobile, they're going to have Strix Halo, Kraken, Escher, and more. And I just think AMD has the better APUs for the next couple of years outside of specific scenarios. Uh, well, I guess 
Also, I should say that Meteor Lake will have some time in the sun, or in the snow, I suppose, this December through probably February or something. So Meteor Lake does have that few months there where they can shine, but after that, it just seems like it's going to be really tough in client for Intel if AMD is able to get a bunch of contracts, which, speaking of contracts and client... This brings me to the final things I want to discuss about Intel and AMD's earnings that just came out over the past couple of weeks. Because, well, I just worry if Intel can hold on for another four years based on what I'm seeing here, well, AMD erodes market share. You see, if I put this here, AMD likes showing quarter over quarter data. And it's because, for example, in Data Center, they are roaring upwards again out of this semiconductor recession they just waded through. Whereas Intel, they don't want you to directly see quarter over quarter. But if I pull up two sets of quarter information, they're actually down in Data Center from last quarter. Even though AMD's going back up, where their margins remain zero. Which a report from Semi Analysis shows this very well. AMD is getting dangerously close to capturing 50% server market share. And I must emphasize the importance of this here. AMD could get to 50% server market share while they make good margins and Intel effectively isn't profiting on the average chip they sell. This is important to bring up because does anybody remember how NVIDIA ended up beating Radeon into the dust for a decade and only now is Radeon starting to recover? Well, this was by allowing Radeon to hold 45 to 55% market share and just avoiding barely a direct price war. And you see, that was 15 years ago. NVIDIA held about half of the market. Radeon held about half of the market. But NVIDIA was making significantly higher earnings, or should I say higher margins, while they were holding 50%. And so think about it. When you have a kind of duopoly, a, a market where you have one team that is 50% and the other team that holds 50%. It's a war of attrition. And that war of attrition in the corporate world is almost always won by the company that's holding 50% market share while actually making a huge profit. Because over time, if one side is selling things at cost and the other side isn't, they will save up more money, put it into R&D, and then eventually just be able to outspend them out of the situation. And as far as I can tell, that is what AMD seems to be doing in server right now. I mean, to be honest, the overall earnings for AMD and Intel weren't wildly interesting to me. It seems like they're both recovering a bit, but the market is recovering a bit, and neither of them beat expectations by some number that seemed surprising at all. But I will say that AMD's earnings, to me, show that they could win a war of attrition here very soon if Intel doesn't get its act together. And unfortunately, though, that's also why I think AMD is being a little timid in gaming, which if I put this also on screen, you can see that AMD actually increased their margins when they sold more dedicated graphics cards, which is important to point out because this completely debunks a lot of recent rumors I've been seeing that AMD is laying off divisions and considering canceling all Radeon desktop in the future. They are not. When they sell more dedicated desktop cards, they make higher margins than they are in console with PS5. They would be idiots to stop making those. And of course, AMD already debunked rumors that they're laying people off from this ridiculous game of telephone that the press loves to play all the time. Anyways, though, gaming is important to AMD, and that includes desktop GPUs. And speaking of importance, though... I guess this is the final thing I need to highlight. I've been talking about upcoming APU and client releases out of AMD and Intel and highlighted how, well, AMD is close to getting 50% market share in x86 data center compared to Intel. Okay, well, the old adage was server is everything to these companies. I remember 10 years ago, that's all people would say in the forums, and then they look smug like nobody really knows the truth. Well, this does not seem to be true for Intel anymore. If you look at Intel's recent Q3 earnings, you can see that now for them, at this point, client. Client is any everything to them. And any investor that is looking at both of these companies to park their money needs to look at Intel's roadmap for the next two years, not the next five years. Remember, what's actually coming out in the next two years is just Arrow Lake Lunar Lake, which is a low-power version of Arrow Lake, really, and then Panther Lake, which is a basically successor to Meteor Lake. That's all they got for the next two or so years. And then look at what AMD has coming over the next two or so years. And then remember that client, client is the last bastion of billions of dollars of profitable revenue that Intel has. If AMD, or Qualcomm for that matter, successfully erodes this, 
Intel will have almost nowhere to go anymore. And so, well, I'm not going to speculate on how that will turn out for Intel over the next two years, but I will say with confidence, Intel's going to fight aggressively next year for client. It's very obvious from recent leaks I've put out of upcoming AMD APUs where they're launching like six APUs in a 12 month period or something that AMD, AMD is going to go for laptop. But I expect Intel to fight back hard because that's the one thing they can't lose any ground in anymore. And actually, that is going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to like it, share it, subscribe, and ring that bell button so you actually get notifications of upcoming pieces of content. And speaking of content, consider joining the Patreon. Today, a 1.5 hour video going over the rise and fall of the PC gaming renaissance just came out. And it's ad-free and exclusive to patrons who pay just $2 a month or more. If you have $2 a month to spare, there's a catalog of hundreds of pieces of exclusive premium content for you to watch and listen to. And well, we can't do this without our patrons. So yeah, please consider joining our Patreon, support our sponsors that you need products from. And of course, as always, thank you for watching. <laughs>